All right, guys, so this is the car. We're going to be doing the Easy Ride Classic Airbag setup on. It's the uh, 68 four-door DeVille. It's sitting factory height, as far as I know. So we will measure just from top of the wheel well there and the top of the skirt there just to get a general idea of how this kit, how low this kit gets. Where are we? 25 and a quarter-ish. I'm looking through the camera and at the tape at the same time, so there's the measurement there. 13 and a half, depending on where you look. What we're gonna do now, we're going to uh, jack the car up, get the back on jack stands, take the uh, rear tires off. We're gonna start with the back um, and work our way forward. Okay, so we have the box all opened up. This is all that I have, which is basically the entire kit minus the tank and I believe the brackets which will show up later this week. So again with the list here, which he does say specifically about the tank, which is nice that we know what we have. And I'm super impressed with the kit. I gotta be honest with you. All these bags have, uh, let's see, they have Easy Air Ride printed in them. Um, Everything is packaged well and tells you exactly where it goes. Plus there's a, a instruction manual that they want you to download to go through on your install. Okay, so we went ahead and removed the skirts, which are like I said, the pin, it just spins and then you just pull it out. Super simple there. Take the wheel off, remove the hubcap, and then you're going to want to remove just, I just did the bottom of each shock here then you realize that all your stuff is completely worn out. But we won't focus on that. And that just slides right off that pin and you can just let your shocks hang freely. Now would be the time to replace them. I don't have them at the moment, so unfortunately I'm just going to run these until I can get some replacements. Um, you're going to have your jack under the rear end and then you'll just slowly let it down and release tension off of your factory springs so i'm not quite all the way there yet i need to let down a little further hopefully i have it on stands high enough make sure you get your car up high enough so you won't have any clearance issues on letting things down and getting them in place uh also i may have to do something about this exhaust that they've got going on here we'll see depending on how low this goes if i run into issues with their terrible vent pipe that they used but that's okay Hopefully I can get this low enough to where we can uh, get these factory gigantic springs out of the way. And as always, be careful. Don't have anybody up inside of here while you're doing this. And let's get it done. Yeah, we got the springs out and I've gotta be 100% honest with you. They didn't just fall out like everybody says they do. Um, maybe your car will. So once you get the uh, shock removed from the bottom there, they say that you can lower the rear end down and the spring just falls right out. Well, in my case, didn't work like I said like that. So what we did was put a jack on that side and jacked it up as high as it would go to relieve as much pressure off the spring. And then we just, you can tell it's getting loose because you can actually twist the uh, spring. You just can't get it over that little nub. So then I just took a pry bar and just pried it up and over that nub. Um, you can choose to do it that way or you can choose to unhook these arms here. It's up to you, whatever you'd like. Um, mine's all just corroded and rusted on. So once I felt that I was able to twist these uh, springs ever so slightly, I knew that there wasn't tension on them. So I felt safe prying them off with a pry bar on that bottom part there. And then they just slide out the back and down and there they are. Okay, moving on. Let's uh, go get the buckets the uh, bags and come see how these things are going to fit you're going to want to put your jack back underneath the center of your rear end after this just for because reasons so when you want to jack it back up once you have your bags in place you can do so so let's go do that okay i have gone ahead let's get up close here gone ahead and installed one of these i'm just trying to figure it out on my own before i tell you guys how it's done so that's the way it will look. Um, we'll go ahead and put this other one together so you can get an idea of 
what you're dealing with. Um, you've got the bottom bracket, you've got the first top bracket, and then you have that top hat. And then, got the uh, upper spring pocket. I've tried to stay right in the center as best I could, and I drilled the hole right up through the middle of it. Um, that will be for the airline. So once you've got that hole drilled, you're pretty much ready to put the bag in, and then it's just a matter of aligning it correctly. You wanna stay away from everything, obviously, so you don't puncture this bag in any way. Um, let's see if I can get a little different angle here. The uh, little bracket right here that goes to this shock, it's gonna be a little close to this, and then this arm right here. Those are the two things that were the closest for me on this particular car. So what I did was, and I will show you on the other bag, there's adjustment down here on this bracket, and there is quite a bit of adjustment here with this, that you can slide it this way, this way, this way, or this way, and you can kind of just even it out to where you've got even clearance around the whole bag, even like right here on the frame. Um, also, so, okay, let's uh, go over how to put this together. First of all, go ahead and put a little bit of Loctite that they supply you with. And you're going to put your little fitting into the bag here. I'm not gonna tighten it on camera here. I'll just put it in there. Um, and then it does have the torque specs on the bolt if you want to follow that specifically. And then you're gonna take your top, top bracket. This is the top. It's very nice that they have already labeled so you can read right there and it tells you exactly what it is. You can see how it's drilled out for uh, different patterns of bag, I guess, but you'll go to inside to inside. Um, you'll take your hardware here. You can put a little Loctite on these too. Go ahead and don't Loctite them yet because we're going to just put them in loosely and then we will figure out the fitment of the bag and then what I did was is I put everything in there loose at first and then I lowered this the rear end back down um, removed this as carefully as I could just kind of held my hand on top of it nice and tight pulled it out and then I knew where it needed to be and I tightened this down and then you kind of have the same process for the top one but we'll go through that so go ahead and put a couple of these in the top um, to where you can still slide this back and forth and then when you get to the point this the Small hole is for the all thread And the big hole Is for your airline. So let's see if we can see down in there Like that. That's how it wants to be So this one is going to line up Just like so and then they want you to take a lock nut or a lock washer and one of the supplied nuts and I won't do it right this second because I have to take it apart again but lock washer nut it's kind of hard to get to the nut on here but you can do I had to do it with a wrench to actually get it tight but that's how that will look well we're not ready for this quite yet but it does also have instructions on the piece it tells you what it's for and you want to make sure to put it in this position because in that top spring pocket, this slides up in the hole and it's pretty exact. There's very little movement, so that's really nice. This fits up in there how it should. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's bolt this on loosely. And then this piece here is for the bottom. This will sit over the, there's like a little nub on the rear end. And again, I'll show you. We'll go to the other side and we'll start assembling this so this all makes sense. Just wanted to go over all the pieces. Um, this piece of all thread is longer, so you will get two, four pieces of all thread. Longer ones will be for the front, and the shorter ones we will be using for the rear. You're going to want to thread that in. You can also put some Loctite on it when you're ready. Um, so let's go over to the other side. I just wanted to show you a side that was assembled. Before we do that, one last thing I want to show you so I don't forget. So this is a complete uh, set up here as far as the way it will look and it just hangs so let's see if I can steady the camera a little better This doesn't actually connect 
to up there. So you can choose too if your car is going to be on a lift all the time or it's going to be on jacks or whatever. If you're gonna be under it all the time, you can um, make it permanent. I guess you could get a little bit longer piece of all thread and uh, drill a hole exactly and, and go ahead and connect that so it would connect to your floor. Um, but it's not intended to do that. So you wanna make sure to, this is what you'll end up with. This is what it'll look like uh, because once you put weight on the car, that will slide up into that pocket. That top hat will go up into that hole, the bigger hole, and that's where it will live. And you don't need to worry about attaching that in any other way. But the bottom one is attached with a bolt. So just so we're clear on that, so there's no questions about that. So when you go, when you get both sides done, what we're gonna do is just make sure that these top hats slide up in there like they are supposed to. And then we'll check the clearance one more time. And then that's that, that's the rear bags installed. So again, sorry about that. Just wanted to make that clear. All right, let's go to the other side. Okay, we're on the other side. You're going to need your three brackets. These will be for the top. This is the bottom, your bag, and you have put more sealant on your fitting there. You'll need your three bolts, a nut, lock washer, and a large washer. A drill with just a eighth inch bit or whatever you drill your pilot holes with. <clears throat> Sorry, I have allergies, so that sucks. Um, first of all, you're going to take your rear lower and it's got a slot in it and that's got a slot in it so it just sits just like so um depending on which way you need to slide things um and the bag it's up to you however you need to do so you're going to probably want to do this is what i've done on the other side is put a bolt under there and just have it just loose but just tight enough to hold the bag in place but where you can slide it and then we're going to also install this on top of that bag loosely so I can slide it back and forth. And then I'm gonna put my top hat on. Then I'll lift it up, make sure everything fits, I get my clearance right. Then I'll lower the rear end back down. And then I'm gonna lift this whole assembly out. And then you'll also slide the top hat off because it's not going to be bolted to this all thread. But make sure this piece doesn't move when you take your bag out so you have exact placement of where you want this to be. So, I'm going to go ahead and just assemble this loosely and then I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so I have got this loosely bolted in. I've got this top hat loosely bolted in so it still can move. Um, I've noticed that the sticker here on the other side is facing out because there's a lip on this side and it's pretty much flush right here with this plate. So I'm going to try and set it up the same way as I did the other side. Because I'm pretty sure the clearance will be really similar. Take your bottom bracket, or I mean your top hat, I'm sorry. Large hole will be for the airline and the small hole the all thread goes through. So I'm going to go ahead and slide that up on there. Like, like so. Okay, so then this whole assembly that goes up inside that hole and it's a pretty nice fit. It's it's pretty dang close to perfect. So I'm gonna put a jack under the rear end again. Go ahead and jack it up slowly till I can get it up inside that pocket. And you can kind of see, you can kind of watch it up through here. You'll see it come up through here. You'll see the all thread poke up. Um, and then you'll know you're in place. And then once, once you've got all that, you can turn this. And when you turn it, every all the angles or all the clearances change because this and this, they're all different. So then you can kind of arrange it where you want it to be. And then what I'll do is I'll lower the jack down and then I'll make sure this all stays in place. And I'll loosen this up. I'll hold this all in one, remove it, and then tighten the nuts or the bolts down. And then we will at least have the this piece where it needs to be. Um, and once this is where it needs to be, I'll show you how this goes on uh, permanently. And then we'll put it back in. Then we will raise it up again, do one more fitment check, and then we'll go ahead and slide this 
where we want it to be and then we'll tighten this bolt down underneath here with that large washer hopefully that makes sense um but yeah we'll we'll go through it and hopefully this works out so we have the bag up in place Kind of see up there. Um, you can't really see the all thread. You can barely see it, but it's up inside. Sorry, I won't focus on super, super close. But now what I'm going to do is lower it down now that I know everything's where I want it to be. And then I can take it out carefully while holding the top hat, the bottom part of the top, if that makes sense, onto the bag and then I'll tighten it up and I'll show you where I've got it located. I'll bet you that um, the lip is supposed to be facing the rear end because the other side's the same way. So I would assume that's how they're designed. I must have missed that part when reading it, but it's kind of what it's looking like. So I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so this is what I mean. Well, what I said earlier is there's, it's pretty much flush here and then back here, there's quite a bit of a lip. And the other side I have set up the exact same way, so I would assume that that's the way that it's meant to go in most of these older cars. So, if you have this particular car, this is probably your indicator that you're in the right position is this towards the wheel and this lip towards the uh, rear end. So, I'm going to go ahead and just take this off. I'm going to undo the nut on the bottom that I got, just kind of holding it in. Uh, temporarily and then like I said I'm just gonna hold this together while I get it out and then I'll know exactly where it's got to be tighten it down and then we will uh, go on from there okay I've got that secured in there make sure you put some Loctite on there though for sure because um, okay. you're just gonna in my situation I don't know if some of them are just a little bit different when they're welded up but I have no clearance for a socket so I just had to put 11 16 wrench on there and struggle with it for a little while but yeah use some uh, loctite okay now we're going to put it back in the car we know that that little sticker this edge right here is going to be facing us so we'll go ahead and do that again you're going to use your big washer and your bolt for the bottom bracket we'll go up through the this rear end bracket here up through that into the bag and make sure you've drilled your hole up there don't forget that because we are going to be putting this in hopefully permanently so okay let's do it all right i'm gonna go ahead and tighten my bag down on the bottom right there remember in this bracket it's not just a straight hole you can slide it so you can slide the bag and you can also slide the bracket on the bottom and the bag can slide you just want to get good clearance from your frame rail this side um the arm, which will be, let's see, right there, that good clearance there, you can bring it back a little bit, just want to give yourself a good amount of space on every angle. Okay, both bags on the rear are in, you just want to make sure your clearances are all good, I've got my holes up here, for the tank I'm going to remove these brackets, I'm going to go grab the tank real fast, I'm going to mark some holes and get that drilled. There's not much to explain on the tank. I went ahead and just drilled some holes for the bottom brackets. And then I'm just gonna go up underneath and bolt it in. Um, I'm facing it this direction so I can get that quick disconnect facing outward. If I would have flipped it around, it would have been up inside that pocket. So put it this way for that reason. Um, and then the compressor, I'm probably gonna put up on this little angle piece because eventually I'm gonna do two compressors. So I'll just put it right there. Um, Cause that line, isn't long enough to bring it down here on the floor. So I'll get it up and out of the way. Um, I could even stuff it up underneath there. I don't know, we'll see. But yeah, this is just kind of up to you how you want to mount it. That's where everybody mounts their tank. So that's kind of what I'm doing it that way. Uh, yeah, so this part of the process is pretty easy. You just got to figure out where you want to mount your stuff. And um, it didn't come with the hardware, but I did have some bolts. So I just used what I had. I'm pretty sure there's hardware for this, and I think it's in this bag right here. I'll go through it and make sure, but yeah, I'm pretty sure all this stuff is here to mount that uh, compressor. So I'll get it all mounted, and I'll show you guys what I end up with. 
Okay, so that's it. There's the tank installed, compressor installed. I almost forgot, don't forget to plug in your, or screw in your external filter for your compressor. So, um, you have a couple different options. You can just screw it directly, I'm oh, sorry, you can screw it just directly in to the side of it, or it comes with a couple, comes with some fittings if you want to extend it and put your filter somewhere else. Also, they give you two more uh, filter elements that you can change out when this one gets dirty because it does come with one inside of it. It just pulls apart right there. As you can see, it separates super easy. So we're just going to pop this out like so. It says you don't need any, any type of sealant or anything like that. Just no tape, Teflon tape or anything like that. Just screwing in just like so. That's probably tight enough. It's plastic, so remember that. Don't get it too tight, but it's nice and snug. And we'll see. We'll see how that sounds once we get it all wired up. So next up, we will start setting up this relay so we can get all the power ran. Um, blue will go to the battery. And they give you this blue wire. And it does tell you what they want you to do with it, which is go to the battery. And... Also, you're going to want to run the inline fuse up there as well, connected to that, which we will do. So it takes care of that one. The red one you do not use. The white one is for the pressure switch. So you're going to want to come back, bring this one back to the pressure switch. The yellow will go directly to the pump. And then the black is your ground. And you will also have a ground off the pump as well. And that's pretty much it. Simple as that. There's a diagram. Um, on their website that I'll put up on the screen So you can kind of go over that a little bit more and I'm just gonna go ahead and do it uh, Probably going to leave the relay in the back. I think I don't know. We'll see But you can do whatever you'd like you can put it under the hood uh, You can put it in the back Whatever you decide and then I'll probably just run the wire along the uh, kick panels here under the carpet and around under the back seat probably be what I do so, I will get that done, and I'm probably not going to show me doing it, because it's the process of doing it, I guess, because you should be able to get it. I have faith in you. So, we uh, removed the rear seat so we could do the power wire, and I'll probably end up running the airline through here, too. So, on the 68, it's like most, you have to push the seat back, and then up and out. For both sides um and then a lot of guys are saying that there's like little hooks right here which is true on some of the cars on this particular car the four-door 68 there's a bolt here and the same on the other side and then there's this hooks on the top here after you undo these two you just lift it straight out and then your seats are out do the bottom first and then the top because you won't be able to get to these until you get the bottom out so this is kind of what I've ended up with. Um, blue wire, remember, goes to the battery directly. And then you're going to use that inline fuse, which I still haven't got around to yet. Uh, yellow wire will go directly to the pump. The white wire from the relay will go to one of the, the pressure sensor wires. And then the other pressure sensor wire will connect to uh, your long white wire that they supply. And then that will run all the way up to your uh, 12 volt ignition source. And then I believe the last wire that I haven't mentioned is the black wire, which will be the ground. And I'm going to just ground this from the pump and I'm gonna ground the black wire from the relay to the same ground. I'll find a spot, grind it, grind it clean, and bolt it to some bare steel. So we have some a good ground. And then this, I don't know what I'll do. I might either put it here or I might put it up there. Put it somewhere where you can access it somewhat easily so you don't have to remove the seat or you don't have to do anything crazy to get to it. Um, unless you decide to put it up 
underneath the hood in the engine compartment. All right, so this is going to be how I wire it. It's just gonna come up and go through there, it goes across, and then it meets up with my uh, relay over there, and then it just goes down um, underneath the carpet. Goes up underneath there. Sorry, it's kind of dark out, so my camera's kind of not getting the best footage, but goes up underneath the carpet there, and it's gonna come out here. And then I'm going to go across up underneath the dash to the fuse block, and I will find an ignition source there. As far as the power wire goes, it's right here. And that, actually I found, I can't see it right now, but there was a factory hole with a grommet not being used, so I just kind of went through there and then I'll just wire this up out of the way. Uh, and that's the wiring, I mean that's it, I believe, unless I can come up with something else that needs wiring. I don't think so though. Uh, yeah, so we're going to move on from there. Okay, so we are getting closer on our project here um, we're going to run this uh, airline here you can see to the tank there will be these two lines and then we need rear bags also so we're gonna run this single and this single and then this single which will be if we look at this we got the two bottom ones here and the one on the opposite side and then this one right here is going to run to the back and then we'll put this on the end of it so then we can go to our two airbags. I'm going to probably, let's uh, zoom out, let's see, zoom out, I guess I'm already. I'm going to probably uh, run the line up and under the dash down through here where this wire went. And hopefully there's enough room. Should be to run three of these. Hopefully I have enough line, we will see if we do. And then I'm gonna go up and around, and then it looks like I'm gonna probably put this gauge somewhere like right there. It will be hooked to the ashtray, so it will move a little bit, but I'll have a little extra slack in the line for that to happen, because I don't really know where else I would put it. If I put it over there, it would get in the way of my knees and my leg. I'm on this side and the other side, so it's kinda gotta go there for right now. So that's probably what I'll go ahead and do. So, yeah. It'll go down, along through there, and it'll go up and into there. So, let's get that done. All right, so when you're putting your line in, you feed it down through the bottom of your car, or trunk, and push your bag down so you can get it in there. Otherwise, it's a pain in the butt. So don't cut your length yet. Hook it up to the bags first. Uh, before you go to that little Y block. Okay, so there we go, guys. From the lines onto the carpet, under the seat, uh, going up. Hopefully I can skinny past the seat frame. If not, I'll have to refigure it, but yeah. And then it's teed off to the bag and then over to the other bag. And then I got the two lines going to the tank. Um, and then the lines just come down there, you can't see them obviously, and they have them coming out right there. So that is my line routing situation. Hopefully that works for me. Um, I'll show you kind of what I got going on in the back. That's kind of what I got. Like I said, I'm gonna get some loom and, and tie all this stuff together. Okay guys, so we've got the front end all jacked up on jack stands, got the tire off, which is super easy, so I didn't show that part of it, but here it is. Um, I've got the top strut nut off there. I took a second, I just put a wrench on it, a couple wrenches on it because of the top. It's got a spot to hold the actual shaft so you can spin that off. The bottom on the other hand, right there there's a nut on the back side of this bolt mine is completely seized i've put a little bit of heat on it i don't have like a full-blown torch just a propane torch didn't get hot enough so i'm just gonna end up grinding the head of that off and just knocking it through the other side that shouldn't be a big deal 
And then what we're going to do is we're gonna take that jack, we're going to place it under here, lower control arm, and we will jack it up, put some pressure on this uh, spring. And then we're going to probably attempt to undo this right here, which is your lower ball joint nut. And then with the pressure on the jack on the bottom here, then it will hold that spring in place. And then we will slowly let the pressure off the jack and let this spring come down as safely as possible. Now would be the time to change your upper and lower ball joints because these are completely shot. Um, and I realized that the guy who attempted the uh, bearing job put the castle nuts on backwards. So that's super cool. He just kind of jammed two giant washers in there and called it a day. So I got to fix that. But now would be the time to replace anything you need to replace as far as steering components. Um, I don't know, other odds and ends, I guess. He did do the brakes though, so that was nice. Previous owner, that is. Um, so anyway, back to the task at hand here. That's what we're going to be doing. What you will need to do is unhook your sway bar, unhook this suspension bar here. There'll be two bolts for this bar and then just that single for the sway bar. I'm going to just be cutting this end link because mine is completely rusted solid on from underneath. And I'm just getting a new set anyway, because all the bushings are worn out. As you can see, all the rubber is gone, basically. So I'm not too worried about that. Okay, I feel like this is an important part to document fairly well. I've got two jacks under here just because I don't want to die. Um, I'm replacing the lower ball joint anyway, so I had to put this, shimmy this under the boot, so where I'm on the shaft of the ball joint. And I was able to just get this loose with a just a wrench because um, I don't have any short sockets that are this big. So I was noticing as I was loosening this, I wasn't getting my gap here. So then I realized that I was actually getting my gap on the bottom. So this wasn't pressed super tight on the tapered ball joint shaft because a lot of people are staying stuck on the shaft with this bottom part of the knuckle here and then they have to smack it with the hammer. But I noticed this was just following the nut out. So I jacked it up with the jack and I took my space up here so that I could get my space here so I can now take the nut off without being worried about everything exploding in my face. So the point I'm trying to make here is, is try if you can to get a gap on this end so then you can undo it with your fingers knowing that this isn't going anywhere because you've got enough tension on it. So then we can stand back and we'll move this one first. That one was just while I'm under here. And then this is the one that's gonna be letting this spring out. Okay, so the jack kind of got stuck. I wasn't high enough in the air, so I just did it this way to get the jack out and then that literally just falls right out. I'm gonna let it back down on the jack stands and we will continue. Okay. All right, so we've got the bag here. We've got this uh, with the sealant on it in place. Here's the lower bag bracket. There is no adjustment on this really, so you just bolt it in. It's bolted in loosely, but I do have some Loctite on the nut or on the bolt. So when we tighten it back up, uh, this fits just down in this pocket. You can see how this pocket's slotted uh, this way. So you have some adjustment there. And then what we're going to do is, we can get some oh, decent shot of this here. So we're going to cut this out and around and back in, probably somewhere where it straightens out. Probably so right here we'll start and we'll go out. And we're gonna bring it I'm going to bring it pretty far out because I only really want to cut it once. So I'm basically going to take that full lip off. I'm going to get a grinder up in here and do it. All right, that was not very fun, i got to be honest with you. So I'm going to clean up right through here and right through here a little bit, open that up, hit that edge, and then just lightly grind through there. So... Yeah, I used a few different tools, so definitely not the Sawzall, that's not the move. So 
So something like this, this guy here, and then a little bit of that. Mostly these two, this one and this one. So it's kind of what you're gonna want to go for. And then you do have the two holes here. One's for the all thread will go through there and you'll put the washer and nut. And then the other one, your airline will actually go right through there. So that's kind of nice. I'm gonna get this buttoned up here and we will start putting the bag on here. Uh, you can, if you want, if you have a welder, you can clean all this up and you can weld that solid because it is two pieces of steel or you can just clean it up and spray it or whatever you decide to do i'll leave that up to you guys um, all right we'll keep going well that's pretty much what i got going on here i can get this a little bit better but there's a little lip here and a little tiny lip here this is pretty mu almost flush with the outside and then I just notched it out here and notched it out here. So, I don't know, I might clean that right there a little bit more. Well, that's probably it. You can see. So once you get your pocket looking how you want it to look, go ahead and move on to the next step. So I said earlier this doesn't have any adjustment. It does. It's got a little bit of adjustment in it so go ahead and put it in your put in your lower bracket I would leave it loose um, and then you're going to put your top bracket on and go ahead and put your bolts in there and then you will need this and a nut for the top for the all thread once we get this all put together I believe I'm gonna to try to uh, hang it. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna feed it up through here. The all thread should come out of here. I will just put the nut on top of the all thread so it can hang here on its own. And then we will see if we can get this lower control arm up and hooked onto this. This will just slide down inside like we talked about earlier. So I pulled the bag back out and this is where it was. I'm able to move it a little bit back and forth and this is where it seemed like it was going to fit the best so i'm going to go with that remember this lip is facing the wheel um and then if it slid like it is and it's pulling it i'm pulling the bag away from the wheel as far as possible because remember you did have to cut that piece out that we just talked about um the bottom we can worry about once the, the lower control arm's on we can do some final adjustments before we tighten that but we're just working on getting this in the right place um when it was up there though i let's see it's kind of close to these edges so i am just going to come up here and finish cutting that out and also on the other side on that corner uh, i kind of marked it with the screwdriver i'm just going to carry that line along there just to be safe um i just don't want to put a hole in the bag when it's compressed so or when it has air in it i don't know how much will expand so I'm gonna do that while this is all taken apart and once that's done I know I've cut enough uh, and then we'll put the bag back up in here and make it prominent okay so I have fed my line through the back hole here and then I'm going to hook it to the bag and then feed the bag up through that way you're not struggling trying to get the airline hooked into the bag while the bag is in place So we've got the bag in place. We've got good clearance all the way around. Um, just wanted to double check before I made everything permanent. Probably take it back apart and throw some paint on that edge. Uh, but yeah, just use a jack to jack up your lower control arm bolt this bar in play back in place uh, lower ball joint will go back on and looks like the bump stops gonna have to come off the bottom here because it will probably hit the bag when it compresses and I honestly don't know how low this is going so probably just pop that off there and like I said I am gonna be getting new uh, I will be getting new upper and lower ball joints so don't worry about that they're just not here yet 
just wanted to get this done, like I said, and I can come back through and fix all this. So we've completed one side. Make sure you tighten your bottom bolt, your top nut, you've ran your airline, you've checked your clearances, you've got your lower bracket and lower part of the bag adjusted how you want. Make sure you match the other side. Uh, tighten up your lower control arm nut. Um, I'm going to replace the sway bar end link because mine was all destroyed, but make sure you do something there. And then we're going to repeat the process on the other side. So let's jump over there and do that. Alright, we have this uh, driver's side in. Temporarily, I'll take it back out and spray my bare metal areas, grind it down a little bit. But anyway, you just want to make sure you've got some... Uh, I'll probably catch. Oh, never mind, that's just where I kind of caught it with the grinder a little bit. But yeah, make sure all your edges are all cleaned up. That's a little close. But anyway, Move your bag around until it makes sense to you. If you need to cut some more, definitely cut some more. So on the front bags, you are going to need to run them in through the firewall. So what I've done was, let's see, on the driver's side, I went down through the rubber by the steering wheel column. You can drill a hole through the firewall if you'd like. That's what I actually did on this side. Down there, there's some wiring you can see through the backside. I just drilled a hole next to the uh, harness that comes through. Um, and then just use the rubber grommet where you've got bare steel. So yeah, there's my lines. I've got the lines coming up through here and down through here to the back. And then that one line goes out and up into that bag. You wanna make sure, follow your diagram here, which is super simple that like we talked about before. Um, it's kind of what you're going to end up with. Uh, this one goes to the front bags. This one goes to the rear bag. The reason why my Y isn't up here is because it's in the back. So I didn't have to run that extra line up front. So I only had to run three. Um, and so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and mount that up out of the way. And if I need to, I can trim some of these lines a little more, but for now, that's what I'm going to end up with. It does come with the power wire for your little light here for the gauge. One will go to 12 volt. One will go, uh, let's see, one will go to the 12 volt like ignition power. So uh, it comes on with ignition. It doesn't stay on all the time. So make sure you use your test light for finding that power wire wherever you choose to. And then the other one will just be a ground wire. Um, that little bag right there is exactly the wiring that you will use for the light on your gauge. Let's check this out. Yep. So that's that. I've got my test light here. I'm gonna go pull the little fuse box down. It slides down and I'll grab the key to the car and I will find myself a 12 volt keyed source, which I will be hooking this wire up to, which is the white one which comes off of your pressure sensor that I, you have to run forward to your 12 volt ignition source. And then I think guys, we're ready to see if we can make this thing work. I went ahead and did the ground wiring on the relay and the pump itself. Remember to wire those up and let's see what else. Oh, put some air in the tank because it recommends to air up your tank before you run the system so your pump's not sitting there and dying trying to get it up to operating pressure. Also, this will be the other thing I have to do, which is just wire in my um, fuse that they give you with your power wire. So I've kind of got it ran up here, so I'll go ahead and do that also. Ah, uh, and I think that's it, guys. Uh, it should be, should be everything. 
All right, everyone, that is all the way aired out. I believe I have some rubbing issues in the back, but I have to figure that out tomorrow. I'm done for the day. I will come back. We will put all this video together. Hopefully it turns out. Okay, so the car is finally bagged. Um, this is like the maximum ride height that I was able to get. I'll measure it out on the wheel wells real quick. Got about 27 inches on the front. I think the back could go a little bit higher. But we'll just measure it right here. Where are we? Around 13. Anyway, do a walk around on the car real quick of maximum height. Not that that matters really, but I just wanted everybody to see that. And then we will air it out and I'll show you how that works. All right, guys, this is it. And it's taken me a long time to make this video. It's October and I started in, I started making the videos in July. I was done in July, but I just haven't gotten around to put it all together yet. So this is the car completely aired out. I am super happy with how low it goes. I was really concerned about the back being a lot higher than the front. It's slightly higher and we're talking just by a little bit, as you can see, just barely. But I am super happy with it on the, let's see, I'm actually scraping the exhaust on the right side, right past the manifold. So that's how low it does go. Um, I will measure the wheel wells right now so you can go back and see how dramatic the difference is on the ride height. The back doesn't actually scrape on anything up inside the wheel wells like I thought, and neither does the front actually. It's the exhaust that was scraping that I was talking about earlier in the video. That's all it is, it's scraping. Well, let's uh, measure it out real quick and then I'll have my wife hold the camera and we will go ahead and air it up. I'm not gonna probably show me airing it up and letting it out, because I don't want the compressor just to keep running and running and running. It's running right now, actually. But what you see when it goes up, when I air it up, is the same, about the same speed as when you air it out. This is on the smallest lines, the quarter inch lines. So if you want it to react faster, you're gonna need to go with one of their larger kits. Remember this, again, is just their basic kit. Uh, with a single switch in it well with a dual switches i guess for front and rear and let's uh measure these real fast so we're about eight inches about eight inches on the eight inches on the back and we've got a little less than 20 so like 19 I don't know, seven eighths ish. You could probably call it 20 though. That's how low we are. So you definitely don't want to be driving this all aired out. So yeah, super close to the ground without, without cutting anything other than just those pockets for the bag to fit up inside. This back tire is a little low, but yeah. Hey, you can see it's Halloween time. Um, I think it looks super cool though. I'm super happy with it. I would definitely recommend it to anyone who's looking to bag their Cadillac. It's a super, super straightforward install. It only took me, oh, I don't know, about, it only took me about a week, maybe off and on between work to, uh, to get it done so yeah the only reason why it's taken me so long to get this video together is I just have not had time to put it together so if I were to recommend I mean if you've got the extra money I would uh, probably go ahead and go with the dual pumps because this pump with the smaller tank this is like a five gallon tank which is really small so I would try and do the dual pump setup because it turns on every time you air it out and go to air it back up again. You can kind of hear it over the exhaust a little bit. I don't know if you can, but I can hear it just a little bit. 
in the car is not actually too loud. We'll hop in it real fast before it shuts off. But this does have just, it's dual exhaust with glass packs, so it's kind of loud. But let's hop in here. Yeah, it's kind of loud. You definitely can hear it. Um, but here is the switch panel. You can see we're all aired out. The one thing I've had to do is I've marked it in a couple spots. So I know exactly where I want my air to be at when I'm driving around. I usually don't drive it completely full of air. So, I'm gonna let this tank fill up and then we'll show how quick it airs up. Okay, that's about it guys. That's about max max height on this thing. Might be able to nudge it up just a little bit more, but that's way further than I ever take it. So yeah. And it airs out about the same speed. Maybe just a hair faster. But nothing crazy. Alright guys, so that's probably about it. I have one more thing that I want to talk about. And it is the front pockets for these airbags. I did, this is another reason why I didn't put the video together sooner, is I did blow a bag right there. And that was on this side. So make sure you trim your pocket more than you even feel like is necessary. I'm able to get my finger around the whole bag on the front side. The back, you're always gonna have enough room. It's that front side towards the wheel and then each side front and back. That's where I caught the bag was on, I think the back side. So I had to go back and trim that out more. So yeah, definitely don't do that. If you watch the video, you'll see that I cut a lot out. So you're just going to want to make sure you just double check your fitment. Check it five times if you need to. Um, definitely just to get it right. Other than that, and that was my fault. That wasn't, that wasn't the kit's fault at all. I just had the bag in the wrong spot and I didn't have it trimmed enough. So other than that, I would I recommend the kit. It was a simple install. It takes a little bit of time, but... I'm pretty sure almost anyone can do it if you've just got a few tools and some jacks and jack stands. Uh, ride height, I'm happy with the ride height. I didn't, I have not put the shocks on the front, which I would recommend because it is super spongy. Um, so if you can, definitely get those. I will be getting them hopefully sooner than later. But you can do it without them. But just know that it's a super squishy ride. If you have more money, I mean, go with their, go with their more expensive kit. They have a few to choose from. You can do dual pumps. You can do uh, multiple switches on your front switch panel there. It would be nice to be able to control each corner by itself. That's one thing you don't get with this kit. But like I said, you can get with their more expensive kits. I just figured I could start out with this kit to get me going. And then I can always upgrade later. I can always do another pump. I can always do another, a bigger tank. Um, I can always add on to my switches there and reconfigure that. Uh, as far as like their switch panel um, routing and stuff to get that, all the tubes on the back. If I haven't shown what you need, you can definitely get on their website at Easy Air Ride and look through their um, instructions because all the instructions really are there i've tried to show what i can to help you guys out but if i'm not showing what you need definitely get on their website and go through what they have because it's really easy to to find on there and yeah so i think that is officially all that i have to say about it 
So I appreciate you guys watching. This is an extremely long video, but I tried to be as detailed as possible, as much as I could be. So thank you to Easy Air Ride for a cool kit. And thank you to you guys for watching if you did. If you have any questions, make sure you ask because I will try my best to answer them. And we will see you guys next time.